ज्ञानकोश पुराणास इंट्रोडक्शन सर्गच्च प्रतिसर्गच्च वंशो मनवंतराण च वंशानुचरित पुराण पंचलक्षण सर्गच्च प्रतिसर्गच्च वंशो मनवंतराण च वंशानुचरित पुराण पंचलक्षण मनवंतराज A manvantara is an era. There are four smaller eras, yugas, and their names are Satya, Arkrita Yuga, Treta Yuga, and Dwapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Each cycle of Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, and Kali Yuga is called a Mahayuga. A Mahayuga comprises of twelve thousand years of the gods, or equivalently four thousand three hundred and twenty thousand years of human. Seventy-one Mahayugas constitute a Manvantara, and fourteen Manvantras constitute a cycle, Kalpa. One Kalpa is one Brahma's days, and the universe is destroyed at the end of a Kalpa. Each Manvantara is ruled over by a Manu. In the present Kalpa, six Manvantras have already passed, and the names of the six Manus who ruled were Swayamvu. What? Swarojita, Uttama, Tamasa, Raivata, and Chashusha. The name of the seventh Manu, who rules over the seventh Manvantara of the present Kalpa, is Vaivaswata. The titles of seven great sages, Saptarishi, as well as the title of Indra, change from Manvantara to Manvantara. The gods also change. In the present Vaivaswata Manvantara, the seven great sages are Atri. वशिष्ठ कश्यप गौतम भरद्वाज वैश्वामित्र एंड जमदग्नि द गाड्स नाउ आर द संध्या द रुद्रा द विश्वदेवा द वसूस द मरुस द आदित्य एंड द टू अश्विन देर विल बी सेवेन मनूज इन द फ्यूचर बिफोर द यूनिवर्स इज डिस्ट्रॉय फाइव ऑफ दीज मनूज विल बी नोन एज सवरणी मनूज द रिमेनिंग टू विल बी कॉल्ड Bhautya and Rauchasya, the Sun and the Solar Dynasty. You have probably forgotten by now that Kashyapa and Aditi had a son named Vishwaswana. This was the Sun God, also known as Surya or Martanda. Surya was married to Samanjya, Vishwakarma's daughter. They had two sons. The first son was Vaivaswata Manu, and the second son was Yama, or Shraddha Deva, the god of death. Yama had a twin sister named Yamuna. The son's energy was so strong that Chandrina could not bear the look at her husband. Through her power, she created an image from her own body. that looked exactly like her this image was called chaya shadow samanjana told chaya i cannot bear the energy of my husband i am going off to my father's house stay here pretend to be samanjana and look after my children under no circumstances tell anyone certainly not my husband that you are not samanjana I will do as you have asked me to reply chaya but the moment someone curses me or pulls me by the hair i shall be forced to reveal the truth samjana went to her father vishwakarma kept asking her to return to her husband but this samjana refused to do instead she went to the land known as uttarakuru and started to live there as a mare meanwhile surya who had not realized that samanjana had been replaced by chaya had two sons through chaya they were named savrani manu and shani set as soon as her own children were born chaya no longer displayed as much of love for samanjana's children as she used to do vaivaswata manu was a quite sort of person 
and he ignored the implied neglect but yama was not the tolerant besides he was also younger he raised his leg to kick chaya at this chaya cursed yama that his legs would fall off yama went and complained to surya i have not really kicked her he said i only threatened to and does a mother ever curse her children i can't undo the curse replied surya at best i can reduce its severity your legs will not actually fall off some of the flesh from your legs will fall off on to the earth and create worm thereby you will be freed of your curse but nevertheless surya felt that there was some truth in yama's asking whether a mother could ever curse her children he taxed chaya with the truth but chaya would not reveal anything surya then grasped her by her the hair and threatened to curse her since her conditions were now violated chaya blurted out the truth in an extremely angry mood surya dashed off to vishwakarma's house vishwakarma tried to cool him down it is all because of your exercises energy that this has happened exclaimed vishwakarma if you permit i will shave off some of the extra energy then samajna will be able to look at you surya agreed to this proposition with the shaved off energy vishwakarma manufactured vishnu's chakra a weapon like a blade disc surya found out that samajna was in uttarakuru in the form of a mare he joined her <coughs> there in the form of a horse as horse they had two sons named nasatya and dasra since ashwa means horse the sons were also known as the two ashwanish and became the physicians of the gods surya and samjana then gave up their equine forms and lived happily ever after why was the manu's children why was the manu has no children and he arranged for a sacrifice so that he might have a son nine sons were born as a result of this sacrifice their names were ichwaku nabhaga drishta saryati narasimhati pramashu nishta karusha and prishya dhara manu also made an offering to the two gods mitra and varuna as a result of this offering a daughter named illa was born buddha was the son of chandra and buddha and illa had a son named pururva subsequently thanks to a boon conferred on her by mitra and varuna illa became a man named sudhyumna sudhyumna's sons were utkala gaya and vinashcha utkala ruled in orissa gaya in the region that is called gaya and vinashtatva in the west sudhyumna was not entitled to rule since he had earlier been a woman he lived in the city known as pratishthana pururva inherited this later on when vaishvashanta manu died his 10 sons divided up the earth among themselves ishwaku ruled in the central region he had a hundred sons the eldest of whom was named vikushi vikushi came to be known as shashadha thereby hangs a tale ishwaku wanted to organize a sacrifice and he sent his son vikushi to the forest to fetch some meat for the sacrifice while hunting for game vikushi felt very hungry and ate up some of the meat this was a sacrilege and the sage vasishta advised ichwaku to banish vishuku from his kingdom because the meat that he had eaten had been the meat of a rabbit vishuki came to be known as shashadha but after ishwaku died vikushi returned to his father's kingdom and began to rule there this was the kingdom of ayodhya one of the vikushis sons was kakushtha and rama of ramayana fame was born in this line kubalashwa 
Subhalashwa was one of the kings descended from Kakushtha. Kakush Kubaleshwa's father was named Vribha Shadashwa. After Vridha Shadashwa had ruled for many years, he desired to retire to the forest. He therefore prepared to hand over the kingdom to his son Kubaleshwa. But learning of King Vridheshwa's resolve, a sage named Uttanaka came to meet the king. Don't go to the forest right now, Uttanaka told the king. My hermitage, Ashrama, is one of the shores of the ocean and is surrounded by sand in all directions. A strong Rakshasa named Dhundhu lives under the sand. He is so strong that even the gods have been unable to kill him. Once every year, Dhundhu exhales his breath and this raises a tremendous cloud of sand and dust. For an entire week, the sun remains shuddered in dust and for the whole week there are earthquakes as a result of Dhundhu's exhalation. This is disturbing my meditation and you cannot very well go away to the forest without first doing something about Dhundhu. Only you are capable of killing him. I have accumulated a lot of power as a result of my tapasya and I'll give this to you if you kill Dhundhu. Vridheshwa told Uttanka that there was no need for Vridheshwa himself to kill Dhundhu. He would go to the forest as he has decided. His son Kubaleshwa was perfectly capable of killing Dhundhu and would accompany Uttanka. Kubaleshwa and his hundred sons went to the shores of the ocean where all the sand was. Kubaleshwa asked his sons to start digging so that they might find Dhundhu. Dundhu attacked Kubaleshwa's sons and killed all of them but three. The three who escaped were named Drishtva, Chandrashwa and Kapaleshwa. But Dundhu himself was killed by Kubaleshwa. As a result of this great feat, Kubaleshwa came to be known as Dundhumara. The sage Uttanka blessed Kubaleshwa and by the sage's blessing, Kubaleshwa's dead sons went straight to heaven. <coughs> Trisanku hmm? Trishanku from Drivadshwa was descended a king named Triruni. Trairuni was a righteous king and followed all the religious dictates. But Tairuni's son, Satyavrata, was quite the opposite and refused to follow the righteous path. King Trairuni's chief priest was the great sage Vasista. Vasista advised the king that his evil son should be banished from the kingdom. Trairuni accepted the sage's advice. Consequently, Satyavrata started to live with outcasts, chandalas outside the kingdom. After some time, Thairuni relinquished his kingship and went away to the forest. The kingdom had no king and degenerated into anarchy. The absence of a king is also frowned upon by the gods and for twelve years there was a terrible drought. Vishwamitra was another great saint. While all this was going on, Vishwamitra was not present in the kingdom. He had gone away to perform tapasya on the shores of the ocean, having left his wife and children in a hermitage that was in the kingdom. But because there was such a long spell of drought, there was also famine in the kingdom. People started to starve. Vishwamitra's wife decided to sell her son so that she might have some food to eat. She tied a rope round the son's neck and took him to the marketplace. There she sold him in exchange for a thousand cows. Since a rope had been tied around the son's neck, he came to be known as Galava. But Satyavrata discovered what terrible straits Vishwamitra's family was in. He freed Galava and started to take care of Vishwamitra's wife and children. Satyavrata had not been terribly fond of Vasista. 
he blamed the sage for his banishment. When the was famine everywhere, Satyavrata stole Vasista's cow. He killed the cow and served the meat to Vishwamitra's sons, apart from eating it him, himself. Vasista was in a terrible rage when he got to know about this incident. He cursed Satyavrata. You have committed three sins, Vasista told Satyavrata. Firstly, you have angered your father, Sriruni. Secondly, you have stolen and killed a cow. Thirdly, you have eaten beef, a forbidden meat. Because of these three sins, you will henceforth be known as Trishanku and be eternally cursed. Satyavrata had, however, taken care of Vishwamitra's family when the sage was away on his meditation. After Vishwamitra returned, he was very happy to learn about what Trishanku had done and offered to grant him a boon. Trishanku desired the boon that he might be allowed to go to heaven in his own physical body. Thanks to Vishwamitra's immense powers, even this virtually impossible task was accomplished. Trishanku became king in Tyrone's kingdom and Vishwamitra acted as his chief priest. Sagra, Trishanku's son, was Harishchandra and from Harishchandra was descended a king named Bahu. Bahu devoted too much time to pleasurable pursuits. The upshot of his, this was that the defense of the kingdom was not properly taken care of. Enemy king seized this opportunity to attack Bahu's kingdom. They drove Bahu out and Bahu went off to the forest with his wife Yadavi. The enemy kings who dislodged Bahu were led by the Hayaha and Talajanga kings. They were aided by the Shakhas, Yavanas, Paradas, Kambhojas and Pahalvas. King Bahu died in the forest. His wife Yadavi desired to die on her husband's funeral fire. But since Yadavi was pregnant at the time, the sage Urva persuaded her that such an act would be a sin. He brought Yadavi to his own hermitage and began to take care of her. Bahu had also a second wife and she had once tried to poison Yadavi. The poison Gara had however done Yadavi no harm and emerged when the baby was born. Since the baby was born together with poison, he came to be known as Sagara. The sage Urva took care of Sagara's education. He imparted to Sagara the knowledge of all the Shastras and also the usage of weapons. Among other things, Sagara acquired the skill of using a divine weapon known as Agnayastra. When he grew up, Sagara attacked the Haiva kings and defeated them through the use of Agnayastra. He then defeated the Shakas, Yavanas, Paradas, Kambhojas and Pahalvas and was about to kill them all. But these enemy kings fled to the sage Vasista for refuse and Vasista persuaded Sagra not to kill his enemies. Instead, the heads of the Shakas were half shaven off. The Yavanas and Kambhojas had their heads completely shaven. The Pahalvas were instructed that they would have to keep beards. These enemy kings also lost all right to follow the religion laid down in the Vedas. Among the other kings who Sagara defeated were the Konasarpas, the Mahisakas, the Darvas, the Cholas and the Keralas. King Sagra had two wives. The first was named Kaisheni and she was the daughter of the king of Vidarbha. The Brahma Purana does not tell us the name of the second wife, but from the Mahabharata we know that it was Sumati. Keshani and Sumati had no sons. They therefore began to pray to Urva so that they might have sons. Urva was pleased at these prayers and said, Both of you will have sons, but one of you will have a single son and the other will have 60,000 sons. Tell me who wants that, what? Keshini asked for a single son and Sumati asked for 60,000 sons. 
In due course, Keshuni gave birth to a son named Pancharnya. Sumati gave birth to a goat. Instead of the goat, there was a lump of meat. The goat was placed inside a pot full of clarified butter, and from the lump of meat were born sixty thousand sons. Kinsagra proceeded to conquer the entire earth. As a recognition of this conquest, he initiated an Ashwamedha Yajna. In this ceremony, the sacrificial horse is left free to wander all over the earth. The sixty thousand sons accompanied the horse as its gods. The horse eventually reached the shores of the ocean that lies towards the southeast. While Sagra's sons were resting, the horse was stolen. The sons started to look for the horse and began to dig up the sands in their search. In this process, they came up on, on the sage Kapila. Kapila had been meditating, and his meditation was disturbed by the terrible din that Sagra's sons made. He gazed at them in fury, and all but four of the sons were burned to ashes. The four sons who were saved were named Varikshaketu, Sukaketu, Dharmaketu, and Panchanya. The Brahma Purana is slightly confused here. Was Panchanya Keshani's son or Sumati's son? There is some inconsistency with the account given in the Mahabharata. In the Mahabharata, it is Keshani who gave birth to sixty thousand sons, and it is Sumati who had a single son. Named Ashamanja. Also in the Mahabharata, all sixty thousand sons were burned to ashes. The Brahma Purana also tells us that the sacrificial horse was obtained by Sagara from the ocean. This is the reason why the ocean is referred to as Sagara. To come back to the account given in the Brahma Purana, Panchagna's son was Amshu. Mana and Amshumana's son was Dilipa. Dilipa had a son named Bhagiratha. Bhagiratha brought down the river Ganga from heaven to earth and thus redeemed his ancestors who had been burned to ashes by Kapila. It was because of this that the river Ganga came to be known as Bhagiratha. From Bhagiratha was descended Raghu. Raghu's son was Aja. Aja's son Dashrada and Dashrada's son Rama. The moon and the lunar dynasty. There was a sage named Atri. Atri performed very difficult tapasya. So difficult was the tapasya that Atri's energy was thrown up into the sky. The sky could not bear this energy and hurled it down onto the earth. This energy then gave birth to Soma or Chandra, the moon god. Brahma took Chandra up into his chariot and drew the chariot around the earth twenty-one times. From whatever energy was left after Chandra has been recreated, the herbs were born. Chandra also performed very difficult tapasya. One Padma year consists of. Crores of crores normal years. For one third such Padma years, Chandra After the meditation was over, Brahma appointed Chandra Lord over seeds, herbs, Brahmanas and the ocean. Chandra also performed a Rajasuya Yajna as a celebration of his lordship. This gave him a lot of form, glory, wealth, and respect. But all this merely served to turn Chandra's head. The guru, teacher of the gods, was the sage Brihaspati. Brihaspati had a wife named Tara, and Chandra abde abde abducted Tara. Despite the gods and the sages asking Chandra to return Tara, the moon god would not listen. A terrible war then raged over Tara. The gods fighting for Chandra, Surya Shukracharya, the guru of the demons, fought on Chandra's side, and Shiva fought on Brihaspati's side. This war came to be known as Taraka Manya Samagram. 
this it was fought over tara finally brahma intervened and a truce was called but chandra and tara had by then had a son and brihaspati refused to accept this son as his own this son was buddha as you already know buddha married ila and they had a son named pururva the brahma purana now describes the several kings belonging to the lunar dynasty yayati in the lunar dynasty there was born a powerful king named nahusha he married viraja and they had six sons named yati yay yajati samayati ayati yati and su suyati yati became a hermit so although yayati was not the eldest he was crowned king after nahusha yayati had two wives the first was devayani daughter of sukracharya and the second was sarmishta daughter of vrish parva the king of the danavas devayani had two sons named yadu and turvashu and sarmishta had three sons named druhya anu and puru yaya they conquered the whole earth and ruled over it when he became old he divided the earth amongst his five sons yadu was given the lands to the east puru the lands in the center turvasu the lands to the south and southeast dhruvya and those to the north and anu to the west yayati gave up his weapons and decided to travel throughout the world he called yadu to him and said i wish to explore the world and my old age is a hindrance please accept my old age and give me your youth in return yadu refused i will not he said one cannot eat well when one is old nor can one pleasure the comforts of the world old age is not pleasant ask one of my brothers instead yadu's refusal angered yayati he cursed yadu that he and his descendants would never be king yayati next requested dhruvya turvashu and anu but they too refused and were similarly cursed by their father but puru agreed to his father's request and gladly accepted the old age he was blessed by his father after many years had passed yayati got tired of the world and returned to puru's youth to him he accepted back his old age and retired to the forest to meditate from puru was descended king bharata after whom the land came to be known as bharata varsha also in this line was king kuru after whom all the descendants came to be known as kauravas the sacred place named kurukshetra owes its name to king kuru from turvasu were descended the kings of pandya kerala kola and chola from drushya were descended the kings of gandhara the horses of the gandhara kingdom are famous yadu had five sons chahasradha payodha krushtu nila and anjika chahasradha's descendants were the haihiyas among whom the most famous was kartavya kartavavira arjuna arjuna pleased the sage the tatriya and became invincible he also had a thousand arms arjuna's greatest deeds were his defeat and imprisonment of Ra- ravana king of lanka krushtu's descendants were vrishni and andhaka and in the vrishni line was born krishna